Deserved by no one, yet accessible to all, divine mercy is the greatest attribute of God. It runs silently throughout human history, at times almost unseen, yet it is as unstoppable as a raging river. In Central Europe, during the war-ravaged first half of the 20th century, as this river of mercy coursed its way through Poland, it entered into the lives of three seemingly insignificant people. Although they lived at precisely the same time, as close as 15 miles apart, they never actually met. Yet destiny would unite them forever. If a snapshot in time could be taken of their lives in the spring of 1938, it would reveal three individuals unaware they were heading toward a painful yet glorious future. In the backwater town of Vadovice, an 18-year-old high school valedictorian attends his graduation ceremony. His plans are to become an actor in Poland. Instead, the role he will play would be on a much larger global stage. At the same time, 15 miles away, inside this convent in Krakow, a 33-year-old nun, confined to her bed, lies dying of tuberculosis. She will later be celebrated as one of the great mystics of the Catholic Church. And near the Polish capital of Warsaw, a 44-year-old Franciscan priest strolls the grounds of his friary, quietly praying. Within three years, he will die a brutal martyr's death and be called the saint of our difficult age. Despite their humble and ordinary beginnings, the lives of these three figures have gone on to inspire untold millions to trust confidently in God's mercy and become channels of that mercy themselves. Their prophetic legacy reminds mankind that within the grasp of every soul is the awesome gift to receive and dispense mercy. And it is through the simple and unnoticed, rather than the great and honored, that this gift most often emerges. It courses steadily through the everyday lives of ordinary people. People like Maureen Digan, a wife and mother from Massachusetts, who experienced divine mercy in a very dramatic way. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear mercy. I didn't want to hear God. I didn't want to hear mass, confession. I didn't want to hear anything about religion at all. Since age 14, Maureen Digan suffered from Milroy's disease, a rare, incurable, and virtually untreatable disease of the lymphatic system. Causing severe pain and massive swelling, the disease forced Maureen to undergo a tragic amputation of her left leg when she was only 17. The disease, however, was not only to plague Maureen's life physically, but mentally and spiritually as well. In her late 20s, as her condition worsened, despair began to close in. I had been on seizure medications because I was having seizures at the time because of stress. I was on antidepressants, and I was on heavy pain medication, and I started to abuse the drugs. I was addicted to the drugs. And I remember one day saying to Bob, you know, at least people with cancer, their time is probably numbered, the days are probably numbered. I said, but mine not, and I wish they were. I don't find life worth living. Maureen Digan's circumstances, however, would soon become even more tragic. In early 1981, doctors told Maureen that her remaining leg would now have to be amputated. The surgery meant she would be confined to a wheelchair, a double amputee, for the rest of her life. She was not even 30 years old. Searching for some way to help his wife cope with the inevitable, Maureen's husband Robert met with a Catholic priest. The priest suggested Robert encourage Maureen to consider a private pilgrimage to a Catholic shrine in Poland. Though reluctant at first, Maureen finally agreed to the pilgrimage. On March 28, 1981, she arrived here at the convent chapel of the Sisters of Mercy in Krakow. Inside the chapel was the tomb of Sister Faustina Kowalska, the Polish nun who died of tuberculosis in 1938. And we went into the chapel at night. They were renovating it during the day, so you had to wait till the night to go in, till the sisters cleaned it. And um, 
we went in and we were praying the chaplet specifically for a healing. And I thought, oh, healing, this is crazy. You know, I thought I have to be insane. And then I thought I heard Faustina say in my heart, if you want something, just ask. So I said, okay, to myself, no one could hear me. I said, okay, Faustina, you dragged me this far from home. If you're going to do something, then do it now. No one was prepared for what happened next. The pain left and the swelling was gone instantly. The severe pain which had crippled Maureen for the past 18 years vanished instantly as she prayed in front of Sister Faustina's tomb. And the massive swelling in her leg decreased so quickly, Maureen had to stuff her shoe with tissue to keep it from slipping off. She would also find that her dependency on pain medication had miraculously disappeared as well. The Digans returned to the United States and headed immediately for the doctor's office. When I walked into his office on my crutches and he looked at my leg, it was just like he couldn't believe it. He said, this is just unbelievable. He said, it's an incurable disease. And then I had told him I was on and off buses and he just had a really... You know, he was just flabbergasted. Other doctors, including a cardiologist, an internist, and two vascular surgeons, investigated Maureen's miraculous recovery. But they were unable to find any medical reason for the cure. Although the cure happened instantaneously, it would be 11 years before it was officially declared a miracle by the Roman Catholic Church. This official declaration of Sister Faustina's miraculous intercession signaled the arrival of a time when the entire world would discover the great spiritual inheritance left to it by this obscure Polish nun. This spiritual inheritance came in the form of a divine mission that began in 1905 when Sister Faustina was born Helena Kowalska in the Polish village of Gorgowiec. Nas dziesięcioro, dwoje, dwie, 